So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about fish that you probably shouldn't start off keeping. And at the end of the video, I'll give you guys two fish that you should start off keeping, just so you can get an idea on where to start and where to eventually get to. So the first fish right behind me um, are angelfish. I'm not saying don't keep these fish. In the whole video, I'm not saying don't keep the fish. I'm just saying they're not the best starter fish. These guys right now are babies. They're about the size of a half dollar. That's a half dollar coin. So you can see, you know, they are pretty darn close. Maybe a little bit on the fins is going on. The main body size. And they will get, I bought two extra larges and two normal size. So the extra larges will get about 10 inches top to bottom, which is like from there all the way down and the other ones will get about seven inches so that's like from there all the way down and that is a very big fish and most people don't realize how big they actually get because a lot of people say that they are starter fish and i disagree because most starter fish are sold full grown guppies platies mollies they're all sold full grown and these guys are not they're sold about 20 percent grown you know and another reason is because they live long. Um, most people might see that as a positive, but my negative aspect of it is most people buy a fish and only expect to keep it for two years. Angelfish, if you keep them right, can live seven to 10 years. That's a really long time. That's as long as a dog can live. Imagine having that, but like five to six of them. And you have to have such a big tank that you can't move and you really don't have anywhere to put it and when you try to move it you know there's just problems and people just don't realize how big they get and how much of a hassle it can be to have so this is my shell dweller tank there's nothing in here the fish get here two days but um there are three negative negatives to this fish and everything else is an absolute positive the first one is the pH of the water. They like a pH of nine or more. So I used some 8.6 marine buffer and then some, two bags of aragonite and this is a 20 gallon long. So that's about where you're gonna get with two bags of aragonite, which should be fine, but I do have a third just in case. And then another thing is they have about a hundred babies per couple every 30 days. So if you don't have anywhere to take these babies, you are getting so many babies that you are most likely just killing them because you have so many that they don't have anywhere to go and they are just dying simply because of tank size or you not feeding them enough, which is sad, but I guess that's part of reality when it comes to them being in the wild too. And then the third thing, which is not always the case, is that they are aggressive. It kind of depends on your fish and their genetics and uh, different fish will react differently to you and the other fish in the tank. But um, that's just something that you can know about, be worried about possibly, but that is not always a guaranteed factor. Um, the third fish, which I don't have because I really don't want one is a gourami. Um They look pretty, they do, but they're a big fish. They don't have babies, or at least not easily. Obviously they have babies, but um, they're big and they're called a starter fish by most people, like a centerpiece fish, but they're really not good for anything. These angelfish, once they get full grown, they will be having babies like crazy. And each baby will be worth like five to ten dollars if I try and sell them to my local fish store. But the Garamis, they don't have babies. They fight each other. Um, they're territorial. And I'm not saying don't keep them. Once again, you can keep the fish. They are pretty. But there's really no positive aspects about them other than them being pretty. And when you take that into consideration, that's really not a good reason to be keeping a fish. You should like them more than just how they look. You should like their personality. You should like their benefits, like laying a lot of babies and 
you know, I have some Kerbenzis babies right here and they are very active. You can see them, like they are constantly moving. Garamis just kind of float around the tank. And like these angelfish, they're like constantly at the front of the tank, you know, shining and shimmering, wanting food. And they are the prettiest fish I have ever seen in person. Um, the last fish is a pleco. Um, just simply because of size, a lot of people get them and they outgrow the tanks fast. And they are an invasive species, so if you live in Texas or Florida, you cannot let them go because they will live. And they're very invasive. But I would recommend a bristlenose pleco, and they get like three inches. They look the same. Um, they can have babies. And overall, they're just a better fish because they don't get as big. A normal pleco can get about eight inches, which is like massive for a 20 gallon fish tank. And I just would not recommend them. Uh, one fish that I would recommend is Curbentis. That fish right there. They get about two and a half inches. They are fine with pH of anywhere from six to eight. Uh, I have this one a little bit low. I think about 6.5. So they're good in that. They get 2.5 inches. So they're dwarf cichlid. Uh, they'll eat whatever. I wouldn't say they're technically a schooling fish, but they do stay together. The only negative about them is they would most likely eat shrimp. I can't guarantee it. Maybe if you had some real big shrimp, they, you'd be fine. But these guys are always swimming around, mostly at the bottom, but always moving. The males are very pretty. So are the females, but mostly the males. I'll pop up a picture. And yeah, there's really not too many negatives about them. There's definitely a lot more positives. Um, and I would say that for the angelfish too, but people just don't realize how big they can get and how aggressive they can be. But um, yeah, Kerbenzis are honestly, so far I've had a great experience with them. And on to the next fish that I would definitely recommend. Um, guppies and platies. You know, I've had my fair share of mollies. Honestly, I don't care for them. Like, look at this dude. He's just sitting at the bottom of the tank, not doing nothing. All these other fish are swimming around. Like, dude, what are you doing? And no, he's not sick or about to die. He just swims at the bottom. It's the weirdest thing. It's awful. Like, this guy has no action. But, um, like that fish, pretty, pretty. Those are platies. That right there is a guppy. And it's not the prettiest, but it's also a female. Um, getting a male would be, they're really pretty fish, but you also can't keep too many of them without having a lot of females in the tank. Um, that's a platy. So that one doesn't technically count, although it is a pretty fish. Um, yeah, I, I like them. I think they're great fish. Um, trying to find my prettiest one, but I cannot find him. But um, yeah, I would definitely recommend platies to people. And if you haven't watched it, go watch my uh, platy video, uh, Pros and Cons. I will link that in the description. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be all for this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.